<coughs> Excuse me. TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are pop live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, If we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is where all the highlights from that live will be. Um, we also got the Patreon, man. Yeah, know what I'm saying? This is a list of everything that's on there. The list is not complete. There are more things, and there are multiple shows starting up right now. Um, and we also got the Discord. You feel me? Now, let's get into this video, man, because <coughs> I've always wondered this. like, Because there's like almost no automatic cars in the UK, which, I mean, you know, to each their own. Yeah, I know I drive a Honda CBR 1000RR manual bike, but I cannot drive a stick shift car. I don't know. It's just not clicking for me well, how to do this. I'm stalling out at every possible chance. Simple. Let's get into this. Conquer driving. I'm in a fairly typical street Richard in the Fandis. UK. Okay. Let's take a look at what people are driving. Here is a Ford Fiesta, and that is a manual. Let's take a look at this Mini across the street. And I did look both ways, although the camera didn't, before across the road, that is. And that is also a manual. Is I that a boat in somebody's front yard? Like, what? Not gonna look at this Fiesta because I just looked at that one. So, don't need to look at two Fiestas. Let's go and have a look at this Citroen DS3 instead. Is that a manual or an automatic? Also a manual. Manual. Now there is a Mercedes C-Class down there. Well, look in the van, look in the van. I believe that is automatic because it's the E model, which means it's gonna be hybrid. I'm gonna have a quick run just to confirm. Yes, C350E. With the bike rack on top, get over it. So that- Probably never been a bike up there. Is going to be an automatic. automatic. This is okay. a much more expensive car and it's also still fairly young, being five years old. Yeah, five. Do your maths, Richard. All petrol and diesel cars need gears. Some change gear automatically for you and in others you have to change gear manually yourself. Right. All early cars were manual and the automatic gearbox didn't start to become widely available until the 1930s and 40s, or at least widely available in certain parts of the world. But that's- Did he just randomly get that footage? Like he was out and about and you like, perfect time? 80 years ago. Why is the manual still so popular today? And in some markets such as America, the automatic has been the norm for some time now. In fact, in some states, you can actually pass your driving test in an automatic and be allowed to drive a manual. I can only guess this can be allowed because there's so few manuals that it's not a major safety concern. But in the UK, most small cheap cars are manual. Also, did you know in America, when you go take your motorcycle driving test to get your license, you can take it on a scooter and you don't have to take it on a motorcycle, which is weird to me. Like that don't even calculate. So, if people in the UK could pass in an automatic and then drive a manual, we would have somewhere between 500,000 and 700,000 new drivers each year passing in automatics with no manual experience, taking to the road for the first time in their manual. And in a country that has a population of only around 67 million, mm. that's a lot of drivers who don't know how to control their car. Thanks. That could be quite chaotic. In the UK, the manual gearbox is in decline. In 2010, 20% of new cars sold were automatic. And back then, that was considered a lot. By 2018, 43% of new cars sold were automatic. But now, nearly 60% of new cars sold in the UK are automatic. Manual. So oh. although new drivers are still opting to pass their driving test in a manual, over 90% of driving tests are manual, the automatic 
is becoming the norm. Oh, is it? So why has it taken so long for the automatic to start to take off in the UK? Well, it's quite simple. Traditional automatics with torque converters were big, heavy, and inefficient. That right. does not bode well with Asian Small and cars. European cars in the UK. Right, right, that makes sense. We primarily use Asian cars and European cars. However, in America, their cars are already big, and heavy, bulky. and inefficient. They have big 5.7 liter what? Inefficient? V8s, which they call a 350 cubic inch. With loads of torque, so having a less efficient gearbox doesn't make as much of a difference. And gasoline, as they call it over there, is much cheaper. So Petrol. having the convenience of an automatic makes more sense because the negatives aren't as noticeable. However, if you were to put a traditional automatic in say something like a 1.1 litre Ford Fiesta from the 1980s, it's gonna drive like you've left the handbrake on. Protect your privacy with. See, I like when people like break it down like this because I wasn't even thinking like that. I was just thinking like y'all just like y'all manuals, but it makes sense. But it's put in real Any life north. perspective. It's gonna drive like you've left the handbrake on, but. In the early noughties or 2000s, something started to change. It was out with the traditional torque converter planetary gear automatic and in with the robotized manual. Yes, automatics were no longer really automatics. They were actually a manual, but with a robot changing gear for you. So that got rid of the disadvantage of the automatic being less efficient and bigger and heavier. They're almost the same size and same weight. Right. The only disadvantage was the price. Normally, it added around 1,000 to 1,500 pounds to the list price of a car. And they worked well in small cars with small engines as well. Therefore, opting to have the extra convenience of the car changing gear for you was no longer such a problem. Well, it was actually convenient. And then the automatic started to become popular and Japanese manufacturers started to use something called a CVT, which stands for Continuously Variable Transmission. Okay. They work well with big engine cars and low powered small engine cars. The only trouble is, is how they sound. Many people don't like the fact that it actually sounds like your engine is staying at constant velocity whenever you put your foot hard on the gas. It kind of goes and in fact, in one of my videos, I made the mistake of calling it a constant velocity transmission just because I was so used to hearing that constant velocity of the right. engine. They work well, they are efficient. If you drive gently, don't worry about it. But if you want to put your foot down, they're not very nice. So the reason why it's taken so long for automatics to become popular in the UK is simply because the technology to make a lightweight, low powered car, which is most of the cars in the UK, automatic yet still drive in a decent way has only become widely available recently Please. but does that mean you shouldn't bother learning manual you should just learn automatic because all cars are going to be automatic soon well the manual is going to be here for a bit longer than you also man city driving in america like big city driving when you're in a manual is brutal on your foot like oh my like switching gears from like one first gear to second gear to neutral to like, you know what I'm saying? Like in city traffic, I'm talking bumper to bumper traffic. Like it's, it's a lot. Ugh. You may think they're gonna be sold up until 2030 minimum when the petrol and diesel ban comes in and that ban essentially bans manual. However, that may be delayed. You never know. Wait, y'all, wait, what? There's gonna be a petrol and diesel so everybody's going to be forced to drive in the automatic? Let's say the ban happens in 2030. Oh, that's here in America. They're doing that too. In California, they did that as well. That's why everybody's going electric now. Okay, I, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then those cars are still going to be on the road for 10 to 20 years after that. So the manual car will still be popular for quite a while yet. Getting a manual license does give you the freedom to drive whatever car you want. However, of course, learning automatic is easier. 
But Wait, is what? there another advantage? Wait, stop, stop. You're going to a manual license? So when y'all go to the DMV, it say manual license? Or it says automatic license? So automatic license would not allow you I'm lost. to drive in the manual? Or is it all just about the money? It's not just about the money. It's about the experience. If you're brought up around manuals, learn to drive a manual. Looks fun. Subsequently got good at driving a manual. And live somewhere where you're not constantly in nose to tail, bumper to bumper traffic. See what I'm saying? Like that bumper to bumper traffic is not, not very good for manuals. That's why it's in America, man. Big cities, like, it's not a lot of manuals. You actually have access to some relatively quiet roads with a half decent speed limit. You may also enjoy driving a manual. It's not guaranteed, of course. Not everyone does. It's not everyone's cup of tea. But there are plenty who do. And as a result, with great British country roads, the manual has stayed strong for years. Even though realistically, knew it. It's always a cyclist somewhere. The economy and how much people earn in this country means that automatics aren't really out of the question. It is a bit of a choice. Now, I could be driving down this road in an automatic, but I know from experience I won't be having as much fun. There is a sense of joy from the achievement of achieving the perfect gear change. He's right, because when I'm on my motorcycle, I feel that sense of enjoyment because I'm doing all that extra stuff. You know what I'm saying? Opposed to when I'm in like a regular car, I'm like, eh, let's just hurry up and get where we're going. The downshift rev match. The heel and toe rev match. Under braking. Did he just hit, hold on, what was that little move? He said heel toe rev match? The downshift rev match. The heel and toe rev match. Under braking. At this point, you're just showing off. And kissing the red line. Although you can do that in an automatic as well. Of course. Drive responsibly. And that's part of what makes driving a manual so special. I didn't break the speed limit there. But I enjoyed myself. A very powerful. He's passionate about this. Powerful automatic will shoot you up to very high speeds very quickly without you doing much at all. Which leads you wanting to enjoy the speed as opposed to the involvement. So therefore, driving a manual enthusiastically allows you to have fun whilst being safe. Because there's something else to enjoy. Of course, manuals aren't for everyone. Some people just prefer automatics. I know both. Some people like auto, some people like manual. A lot of people like manual for the same reasons I do. And many people like automatic because, well, it's easier and they're not really enthusiastic about driving. They just want to get from A right. to B. Right. Whoever you are, doesn't matter. Enjoy your car. Well, I hope this video helps. I like the paddle shifters. If you understand why manuals are still so popular in the UK, If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up and check out Conningwood and Confused in the description. If you're a learner driver and want to insure yourself on a friend or f and via the link at the bottom. Yeah, that's W promo, man. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that like button for sure. This is very informal. It reminded me of a lot of things that's going on in the car world. Taught me a couple things. I feel it, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.